Hey everyone, Dr. Nussi from EasyDOTPhysicals.com back again with another video. And in this one, I'm gonna go through each of the four most common ways, methods to test for drugs and give you the pros and the cons of each. So there are basically four main ways to test for drugs. There's a urinalysis, there's hair testing, there's saliva testing, and there's blood testing. I'm gonna go through each and give you pros and cons for each type of test. So before I do that, please, if you are concerned with an upcoming THC test specifically, check in the description of this video. There are links to all the ways we help people be best prepared to pass a THC test, including our preferred home test and our absolutely free masterclass and as always, thanks to all the members for helping to keep this channel going. All right, so up first is the urinalysis. If you've watched any of my videos, you, you know I'm not a big fan of the urinalysis, so let's go over the pros and the cons for the urinalysis for drug testing. Pro number one would be that it can detect a very wide range. So even if you aren't a regular user of drugs and you just recently, like two days before you just, oops, I slipped up, I was at a party and I smoked a joint or something like that, even if it's just two days later you have a drug test, it's going to most likely pick up that real recent use. And also it can pick up use, again, for THC specifically for potentially months, 30 days or, or even longer. For other drugs, Typically, it's no more than a few days or a couple weeks, but for THC specifically, it can test for a very wide range, and that's one of the reasons why your analysis is so popular for drug testing. Now, you potentially, as the person being tested, might not think that is a pro, but again, that is a pro for that is a pro as far as people that are running these tests is that you can test for a very wide range of times. The other pro would be that because it is so widely available, your analysis is the most common way to test for uh, drugs, that, that brings the cost down, so it can be very cost effective. And that's it, as far as the pros go. Again, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm not a fan of the your analysis for drug testing. And with that said, let's go over the cons. So the cons, number one, the big con, the reason why your analysis, in my opinion, should be completely done away with as far as drug testing goes is that it is so easy to cheat on a urinalysis drug test. They hand you a little cup, most likely, if you're not being observed, they hand you a little cup. They say, go into this room, this bathroom by yourself, fill the cup up and then bring it back out and, and give it to us when you're finished. So when you're in that room, you can tamper with the sample, you can switch the sample out. You know, there's a, no limit to the things that you can do to try to alter that sample to pass that drug test. So it's so easy to cheat that it basically, in my opinion, invalidates all your analysis drug testing unless the drug test is being observed. And even then, people use prosthetics like the Wizenator and things like that to beat those type of drug tests. So it's just way too easy to to cheat on a urinalysis uh, drug test. Number two is it certainly discriminates against certain individuals. And again, the most common substance people are going to be concerned with testing positive for is THC. So I'm specifically talking about THC here, but people that aren't properly hydrated potentially, or that are overweight, that are just, that carry more body fat, they are going to test positive potentially for longer or different periods of time than people that are potentially thinner. So it's discriminatory against certain individuals, especially overweight people that um, carry more body fat. And it's also it, another con is it is very, very invasive if you're doing an observed test. So for something like a return to duty test or maybe the military, you're gonna be doing an observed test, meaning they are going to actually watch you get naked and give your sample into that cup. Somebody, a stranger is going to be standing there observing you do that. So that's about as invasive as it gets. So again, not a big fan of the urinalysis as far as drug testing goes. We don't even do it in our office anymore. Saliva testing could be coming soon as far as the Department of Transportation goes. We will see, but for now, urinalysis pretty much is what you got. All right, let's move on and we'll talk about the second most popular way to test for drugs, and that is a hair sample. So pro number one is you use this if you're wanting to look back at a very long period of time. So a hair test 
can accurately detect drugs for up to a three month period of time. So it's kind of thought of as the lifestyle uh, test, meaning that it looks for patterns of use. And another pro is that it's almost, again, opposite of the urinalysis. It's almost impossible to cheat this. I don't know how you would cheat on a hair test. They are actually taking the hair directly from your head and packaging it up and sending it off to the lab. So that's another pro is you can't cheat on this test. So it's actually going to be a valid drug test almost every time, 100% of the time. Let's talk about the, con the cons of hair testing. You can't perform this test in certain individuals. If an individual does not have hair, obviously you can't do a hair test. So every single person with, I don't know, maybe there's very rare exceptions, can, provi can provide a urinalysis, a urine samples. Again, there is going to be some exceptions, but people that have no hair, cannot do a hair test. So even that doesn't mean you can shave your head and get away with it because they will certainly take your body hair, chest hair, hair from your legs. They will take hair from anywhere. But if you've got no hair anywhere, you can't do a hair test. And it also a con for the hair test is just like I said that it looks back for three months. It typically doesn't look just immediately before for you. So if you again, let's just use THC as the standard example here, is if you have never used THC, but again, you just used two days before, you went to a party, smoked a joint, probably that is not going to show up on a hair test two days later if you've never used before, because your hair actually needs to, it has to take time to get deposited in your hair and then your hair to actually grow out. So because your hair grows slowly, it does take a little bit of time for that THC to get deposited in, in your hair where we can actually find it on a hair sample. So you're not looking probably if you just used one or two or three days before, you're probably not going to see it show up in your hair. All right, moving along to saliva, something that is becoming more popular, again, with the FMCSA, the Department of Transportation specifically, they are trying to implement saliva testing, which in my opinion would be a big positive to the whole drug testing situation as far as the Department of Transportation is concerned. But again, we're not there yet. Your analysis is still the standard, the pros for saliva, very non-invasive. Obviously, all they're doing is swabbing the inside of your mouth. Very simple, very quick, very easy. And it also, a, a, a pro, I think, in this case would be, it does have a shorter detection window, again, specifically for THC marijuana, which gives a more accurate representation of if the person that you are testing potentially could be under the influence or just recently used. It doesn't look back for maybe they used THC two or three months ago or even a month ago. Uh, you also cannot cheat on a saliva test. It would be impossible to do that. A lot of people leave uh, comments in my videos saying that certain mouthwashes can beat the saliva test, but I haven't seen any scientific data on any of that. And you can't obviously switch out a sample because they are physically swabbing the inside of your cheek. I think saliva is so great because of this, it's basically impossible to cheat. I think saliva really should be the standard. Again, the FMCSA is, I think, catching up to that, but it's still taking time. And usually, this is pretty cost effective as well. Again, all they're doing is swabbing your cheek, putting it in a little package and sending it off to the lab. The cons for saliva testing are that it cannot assess for a history of drug use if that's something that you're after. Now, if that's something you're after, typically what you will do is a hair test, but that could be one of the cons. Again, I'm stretching to find cons here with the saliva test because I prefer the saliva test uh, so much. And again, this is another thing that I know people are worried about because a lot of people leave comments like this when I do saliva testing videos uh, in my comments is maybe there's a potential for them collecting your DNA because they're swabbing the inside of your cheek. Again, I've heard comments about that. I'm not saying that this is true, but I know people are concerned about that. So I wrote that down uh, in the cons list. I, again, I really prefer saliva testing. It's, it's my preferred uh, drug testing method if I had my choice. All right, last and I guess potentially least because it's the probably the least commonly used is the blood test, actually drawing your blood, which is typically used in 
either medical situations or if you have an accident or something like that and they send you to the hospital, that's how they will check to see if you have taken any drugs. So the blood test, the pros are that it is extremely accurate because it can detect not only THC, but also its metabolites. It really cuts down on the chances for false positives or false negatives. And also, uh, it detects for a very short amount of time. So because, again, it can detect what's actually in your blood, it's not waiting for the metabolites, like for say, in your urine, it can detect if you are actually high or under the influence at the time of drawing that blood. And obviously, it is also very, very dip difficult to tamper with, to cheat. They are drawing the blood right out of your arm. There's virtually no way to cheat at all with the blood test. The cons and the major con and one of the reasons why it is not a standard at all, unless you're in medical situations and again, certain other situations, it is obviously highly invasive. There's a lot of religions that will not allow for blood draws and a whole bunch, you know, obviously a lot of people are fearful of needles and things like that. So it's not ever going to be a standard because it is highly, highly invasive. They are sticking you with a needle, drawing your blood. And because again, it's used mostly in medical situations and requires a, a professional, a trained professional to do the procedure. It can also be very costly, probably one of the more costly methods of drug testing as well. So that's the pros and the cons of blood testing. All right, so just in summary, the urinalysis will just be the most common kind of catch-all way of detecting drugs. Hair testing is more for looking back at a lifestyle or a pattern of use. Blood testing is for are you under the influence currently? And saliva testing kind of checks for a very short window just leading up to the test. All right, I hope this was helpful and useful. Check in the description for the links for the ways that we help people be best prepared to pass a THC test. And until next time, everybody stay safe.